In this clip, I would just try to make you familiar with the R interface, and particularly the R Studio interface. As you load R Studio, what you will see, certainly when you load it for the first time, is these three windows. One which is titled the console, then you have two more on the right hand side, one which has two tabs, environment and history. Here you will be able to see sort of all sorts of past commands which you used in R and you can reuse them. Environment will get to this, that's very important. And then on the bottom right hand side, um, a little window with a number of tabs, files. That This is like a little file explorer, packages, we learn about that, a help, access to some help. Plots, we haven't talked about plots yet. So a number of useful things which we'll get to at a later stage. Now, importantly, here this console window, uh, th this is really the way how you communicate with R. And here you can do little simple calculations like five times nine is equal to 45. But importantly, for most of sort of practical work, which you may want to do, you need, in a way, a fourth window. You need what's called a script. So you can uh, create one either by going to, to File, New File, R Script, or you can just press this little button here and you get to R Script here, a new script. And this is now, in essence, it's just a text file. But in it, we will save a collection of commands to R which then can be executed either one by one or all together. So as a starter, let's just save this under a certain name. So you, I'll save it under a particular folder here and I shall just call it first steps and it will get the extension dot R and that's uh, an indication that it will include R code. It is good practice to start this uh, code with a comment. Now, a comment in R is preceded by this hash sign. Whatever follows a hash sign, the software will basically ignore. But it's good practice to write for yourself something so you remember what you did here. So here we will write, um, these were, my first steps in R. And sometimes you may want to to write who uh, wrote that code. So that's myself and when you actually did it. That can come in useful at times. So the first substantial thing you should do is set a working directory. That tells R what sort of your default directory is from which you're working, where you get data from, where you want to save things. And the command is set wd and then in parenthesis the working directory in inverted commas. Um, now what I often do is I'll just go to Explorer and I find the working directory where Directory where I want to work in, so that's here. I just go into that little breadcrumb up here, I copy this, and then I paste it in here. So you can now execute this command. So far, nothing has happened. R hasn't done anything. So you can ex execute these commands. If you want to execute all commands that you have in your script file, you can press this little source button. So far we only have one command, that's only this one. If you want to execute a command at a time, you put your cursor in here and then you click the run button. And as you can see, the run button, you can also press control enter, or for the source, the equivalent is control shift s. So let's do that. Let's press source. Now, very important, R will tell you if it didn't understand your command. Okay, and that's very important. So whether you believe me or not, I did, uh, I created a mistake on purpose. And it will tell you what it didn't like. Arrow, 
Backward slash E is an unrecognized escape in character strings starting with something. Now, curiously, and there are some curious things in R, R doesn't like backslashes when it comes to sort of the folder structure. It needs forward slashes. So let's see if we change all these to forward slashes and we press source again. Now everything worked. Okay, you can see in the command window what R has done, it has taken the entire active R Studio document, that's this one up here, and it has, and it has execu executed it. Okay, without error message, we are at this larger than sign, that's the command prompt for R. So that worked, uh, that's fine. Now, the last thing I want to show you in, in this short clip is how to create variables. So if you have commands which you know you want to save because that they are sort of really properly part of your of your project, what you usually want is you would want to add these up here in the uh, in the script file. But very often you will first try a certain command and you can try that in the con console. And once you are convinced that it does what you want it to do, then you'll put it into the script file and sort of save it for eternity. So let's create a variable, let's say test1 equals to 6. Now this will look extremely familiar if you've done any sort of programming before. We are defining a variable called test1 and we assign a value of 6 to it and that equal sign in programming is what's called an assignment operator. So let me just press enter and that fortunately that happens. So we have this variable test1, it has a value of 6. So I could now, for instance, uh, say test1, and if I wanted to have another var value, let's say 8, I just type this command and press enter again, and you, you see that the, the value for that variable changes. Now, curiously, while this works, this equal assignment operator, it is not really how things are done in R. And there are particular reasons for that. In fact, that equal assignment operator will sometimes not work. How you should really do it is the following way. Test smaller than and a minus sign. So this looks like an error pointing to test one and that's really what it is. And we'll give it a new value 34. And you see that now the test one variable has the value 34. Right? So all these commands basically did the same, just that we used different values. And now once you have a, a variable here that has a certain value, you can actually use that in further definition. So let's say test2 should be a new variable, and that should be test1 minus 56. So let me press enter here. So we get test2. And test 2 is minus 22. Why is that? Because test 1 takes the value of 34. 34 minus 56 is negative 22. So, so far, so good. This was just to give you a, a nice little introduction. Perhaps what I should do, let's say you know that there's test 1, test 2. This, this is exactly what you wanted and what you want to save. You can put this now into your script file. You just have to get rid of these prompts and let's say you use different let's use different values so we we know things have changed and if you now want to execute all these three commands setting the working directory and defining these two variables what you do is you either click on the source button or you press control shift s and we can see that these commands have been executed. Test 1 now takes a value of 12 and test 2 is 12 minus 13, which is negative 1.